This is a summary of Joseph Butler's sermon number eight upon resentment, which begins with a Bible verse, Matthew chapter five, verses 43 and 44. It says, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So Butler wants to know, if God commands us to love our enemies, then why did he give us this feeling of anger? He says, quote, Why had man implanted in him a principle which appears the direct contrary to benevolence? So the purpose of this sermon is for him to understand the purpose of anger, the nature of anger, and also to uh, examine the abuses of it. So he's going to try to explore the, uh, try to identify the original feeling, the original emotion that we had in creation uh, in our natures and distinguish it from the abuses of it, the things that seem so so awful about it. So he identifies two kinds of anger. The first type is hasty and sudden, and the second type is settled and deliberate. The hasty and sudden kind is the type of anger you feel when uh, you get hurt or um, someone cuts you off. It's just instinct. It's uh, uh, it, The purpose of this type of anger is to prevent harm to you and your loved ones. And so um, it's it's to help you survive. The second type of anger is is not just to um, it's not just in response to harm, but in response to moral injury or, or or wrongdoing. It's in response to injustice. It's the type of, of feeling we experience when we see someone do something to some do something wrong to somebody somebody else. He says at the bottom of page uh, well paragraph seven. Uh, it's not a natural but moral evil that's the object of this type of anger. It's not suffering but injury or moral injury which raises that anger or resentment. And so he says the purpose of this kind of anger in section, uh, he says this in paragraph 8, the natural object or occasion of settled resentment then being injury as distinct from pain or loss, it is easy to see, that to prevent and to remedy such injury and the miseries arising from it is the end for which this passion was implanted in man. It is to be considered as a weapon put into our hands by nature against injury, injustice, and cruelty. So that's the, the purpose of, of this, this resentment, this sort of settled and deliberate anger. So now he's going to explore the abuses of it. Starting in paragraph number 10, he says, there are only two types of abuses of the sudden type of anger, and he calls the, those passion and peevishness. So passion is the, the people, is the temper that one might have. It just explodes at people. Um, and then the second is peevishness, and that is just the, um, the constant anger, the angry personality that gets angry at, at everything. And so he's not so concerned with those because those don't have as much of a, um, a moral dimension to them. In paragraph 11 and, and, and following, and then into the next sermon, he's concerned with the other type, the, the subtle type of anger. And so uh, in, in paragraph 11, he, he looks at five abuses of resentment. And so you've got, uh, the first type is, is when you falsely think that something has happened to you when it actually hasn't. The second type is exaggerating the thing that happened to you. And the third type of, of abuse is thinking that someone has, has wronged you when it was done unintentionally. And uh, fourth is when you respond disproportionately. Someone did, in fact, wrong you, but you, your, your anger is out of proportion to the harm that was done. And then fifth it is retaliation, which is never justified. So he says there are, um, there are good reasons to, to have anger as part of one's nature. He says that if, if, if all we had were compassion, which is the, the feeling that we looked at in the previous sermon, sermons, if we all, all we had was compassion, then when someone did something wrong, we might fail to punish them or bring them to justice. And that would not be helpful to society. So the fact that we get angry is, the fact that we have this feeling helps us to take care of others, to take care of our, our social relationships, and to take care of society. It also teaches us restraint. It teaches us restraint because uh, when one person knows that somebody else might react with anger or their family and friends might react with anger, then they're less likely to commit uh, that evil or that harm. It also um, makes sure that when somebody does 
harm somebody else that the, the rest of us um, have enough of this anger to actually carry out the punishment that is, is needed to protect society. He wraps up the sermon saying that anger is a guide for behavior, knowing that um, people are going to be angry at us. We know that not only should we not do it, but we know that, that what is and what shouldn't be done. So we can recognize the, our moral obligations through that. And then he wraps up in the last um, paragraph and, sa and saying that this is uh, a generous gift, a divine gift for us so that we would uh, react properly at the one thing deserving of anger in life, and that is injury and wickedness. Uh, I hope you find this helpful.